Ladies and gentlemen, we're almost in 2025 and here are the best dates to retire in 2025 as a federal employee. Now, I'm going to talk about today why these are the best dates because you don't want to blindly just pick one of these days. There's pros and cons for each one of these, but these are by far the best dates to maximize all the little benefits you have as federal employees. And again, we'll talk about that today. If you're new to the, to the channel, welcome. My name is Dallin Hoswell, financial planner who helps feds just like you to get the most out of their benefits. So let's start with this. January 11th, 2025. Why is that the what great day to retire? Long story short, the leave year for 2024 actually ends right after this. So if you have annual leave, your use or lose doesn't reset back to the 240 hours or whatever your limit is until after this date. So you can retire January 11th and have, let's say, 400 hours of annual leave paid out to you. Now, if you didn't know, any unused annual leave you have on the books at retirement, they're going to cut you a check for. And so if you have 400 hours, they're going to cut you a check as if you had worked 400 hours, which is a great perk in retirement. So a lot of people are trying to retire really near the end of the leave year to maximize how many hours they have. So they let's say that the year before you retire, you take in the 240 hours, whatever your limit is, and then you save as much as you can, and then come retirement, you cash out a big lump sum. So again, the, the 2024 leave year actually hasn't ended yet um, until Jan after January 11th. And so that is why technically that's on one of the dates for 2024 as well. Um, because the 2024 year leave year hasn't ended at that point, okay? Um, next, well, let me actually go over really quick the three biggest factors to consider, okay, when picking a date. And then we're going to go back to why each one of these actually help with these factors. Number one, end of pay period, okay? Number two, end of month. Number three, end of year, okay? Let's talk about why all of these matter. First, end of the pay period. If you go to the end of a pay period, you accrue the full leave for that pay period. For example, let's say you retired in the middle of a pay period, not at the end, but in the middle of it, right? You would actually not accrue any leave for that pay period because your leave actually accrues, it actually hits you, boom, at the end of pay period. So this is honestly a pretty small deal. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but if you can, if it, if it makes sense for you, it's not a huge factor, then might as well go at the end to get every last hour of leave that you possibly can <clears throat> that you are that you've earned right that you've actually worked for so may 31st is the end of a pay period and the end of the month we'll talk about why the end of the month is important as well but that's the end of a pay period this is the end of a pay period this is the end of the pay period and january 10th is the end of a pay period now december 31st is not the end of the pay period um, but we'll talk about why a lot of people still do december 31st in just a second okay so end of pay period is number one End of the month. Why is the end of the month important? Well, if you retire the end of the month, your pension is payable the next month. Okay. Well, regardless of when you retire, your pension is payable next month. So for example, if you retire September 9th, okay, September 9th, your pension is not payable until October 1st. So between September 9 and October 1, you're not getting a salary or a pension. Now, if you retire in se September 30th, your pension is still payable October 1st, the very next day. So it limits how much gap there is between your salaries and your pension. Now, your pension takes a while to actually process. So you're not actually going to get your first check on October 1st, but they're going to back pay you back to October 1st. Okay? So food for thought there. That is why the end of the month is so popular. Again, that May 31st, October 31st is, are both the end of a month and they are the end of a pay period, okay? That is why those dates are important. Now, December 31st is, n is the end of the month, but it's not the end of the pay period, okay? But it's the end of the year, it's the end of the year, okay? Let's talk about why the end of the year is important. Again, we actually already mentioned it, and it's for annual leave purposes. Many people want to get a huge annual leave check at retirement, so they save up all their annual leave, they leave, near the end of the year, December 31st is a very popular time to go to maximize however much leave they have at that time. As you know though, you can take, you can actually retire, the end of the leave year for 2025 is January 10th. So you can actually go to January 10th if you want to maximize even more leave, but 
you know, the problem you run into with January 10th is not the end of the month. So between January 10th and February 1st, you're not getting a salary or a pension for that time. So that's why most people, if they want to retire near the end of the year, they end up going with December 31st. So these are the dates that are the best for these reasons going into retirement. Now, honestly, there's some bigger reasons other than these that just aren't right for everyone. For example, when are you first eligible to retire? Um, what time of year do you want to retire? There's other factors that go into this. But again, if you don't have a huge preference, these can be great guidelines to help you maximize all the little ins and outs of your benefit. So I hope that's helpful. And if you're planning to retire in 2025, put it in the comments. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of people that will join up with you and you can help each other plan and get the most out of your benefits together. Have a great day. We'll talk soon.